versus Liberia built a modern diagnostic center at the 14th military hospital in the country. One county lawmaker stresses the need for the passage of the traditional midwife bill into law. Government says it has not received any report from investigators on the $16 billion saga. And of the home front, thousands turned out in Khartoum, Sudan for the funeral of a man shot there Thursday during clutches with security forces. Details for these and much more developments are coming up right after this break. So please be my guest.
because um, when you look at it, the only thing you carry is the biggest count. You look at other counties that don't even have uh, the number, like some counties have almost like 300,000 for a few years. You have some counties like 51,000 in Virginia, Grand Coup and all those things. And everybody is on the same level, like this one. And uh, the last reason is we have the citizen complaining that they don't have this development in the city. It's not that they don't want to do it there, but because the resources that come to those counties are not enough to get to everyone. So um, what we have done is, in the past, the, the Salala district people or the lower bond staff have always been saying we have the number. If you talk about the number, we, that was 2,000 years center, we were like 150 some more thousand. So we have some people that say 6,000 and younger. So if it's the well of the people, I must walk over there. We know it was put on the floor to the Senate. Um, we pray to God that it will be passed and come to us. So we also will walk over there. Are you, think, the are you taking into consideration the financial education, the threading of national government as well? The good thing about this creation of county, we're not creating county for Nigeria, but it is a lot of We're creating a county in Liberia. And the country needs to grow. It's about growth. So are we going to say, like, they must stay the way it is? As the population increase, they can't, we cannot run away from it. We have people now that they are doing people of this trade, they are creating this trade, they are doing all this because of the population. So if the population demands for that, it happens in other countries, and it was gone, it is me that the one country people have to be honored. So we have to look at it. Meanwhile, Representative Menza has at the same time re-emphasized the need for the passage of the traditional Milwaukee bill into law. According to her, the bill when passed will recognize the efforts rendered by midwives across the country, mainly in the healthcare delivery system of Liberia. Yes, I have the, the, the female and uh, the traditional midwives. I'm very, very passionate about them. In the past, I don't, I don't see them being treated fairly in Liberia. We need to come up with a bill that will protect this new wife, um, that will sustain them after, after leaving the field, what can be done for them. So we're looking at it, we're consulting our bill of partner, and we're making sure that that bill, that bill will come up, and that our new wife will be protected, and they will also be well recognized in the country. Okay. That's a good one, that's a good one. Uh, we have roughly about 10 minutes to go. Yeah, and then let me just come to the bill that I talk about about Kupa. Mm -hmm. I co-sponsor that bill. I'm one of the major person because when I listen to the president on uh, inauguration speech that Liberians shouldn't be protected uh, of the economy, mm -hmm. I was moved. Uh, when I saw that bill, that bill is very good. It, it, it's something that they don't have to be a loan that will be allocated only for the president to do it, but it's going to be in the budget that businesses, Liberian businesses will be able to be empowered and then they will be able to help them grow, right? And we, we, we've gone so far and I'm sure it's in committee room, but it's good that we are back. Thank you, you brought it back to my attention and I'm sure when I go today I'm also going to start on that and know the status of it because it's a very good deal to actually to pay attention to it, even the public needs to be involved with it. Deputy Information Minister Bwaka Fufana has termed as unprecedented the perfect and collaborative working relationship between and amongst members of the three branches of government. According to him, the smooth working and cordiality existing uh, between members of the three branches of government are aimed at working and addressing issues of the people of Liberia. According to him, it's about time uh, that the PAPD is enacted and forced uh, to make progress with emphasis on improving the livelihood of Liberians. He spoke when he appeared on the Super Morning Show Friday. You know, he said that every Friday you have members of the legislature you know, having a free walk-in uh, at the president's office, which is basically you know, um, a tenant of an open governance system, you know, uh, that you have members of the first branch of government, the people's deputies, walking in on the president without necessarily having uh, a formal invitation to go and just discuss some of the issues with him. We have, and that is basically meeting our people, you know, because these are our people's representatives. These are people that have the opportunity to meet the different districts uh, across the 73 districts across the country on a regular basis. 
So if you have their representatives going to the president's office, is a tenant of good uh, government. But also he, he enjoys a good relationship also with the court system. He was recently at, uh, 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 at the opening. But, but, but all of this, all of uh, the coordination and, 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 and the good working relationship between the different branches of government um, is manifested by the level of support that we, we not just having from, from our local partners, but also our international partners. You know, some of the times you, when you listen to the different airwaves, or just a few I, I, I would like to highlight, uh, you would think that, you know, things are going downhill, which is quite to the contrary. You know, uh, we just had more than $100 billion being given by, uh, you know, committed by the American government, uh, you know, to, and this is one of the highest donations that Americans have given to Liberia in recent times. The, before that, there were a lot of speculations about whether or not President Trump supported uh, uh, President Weir, you know, whether or not the U.S. government is going to continue to support the traditional relationship with Liberia, uh, considering the fact that the, the opposition had made us believe that following the election of President Weir, the Americans would have, you know, um, sort of uh, be given up on Liberia. That isn't the case. In addition to that support, we saw that the U.S. ambassador has, uh, you know, over the time, a very good working relationship with President Weir. Uh, they just had a little a football match, you know, uh, to further continue that nice, good working relationship, but also uh, they espouse that this is something that the president loves, and so we should continue. The president loves soccer. That's a way of letting out and exercising. And people will say, well, this man loves soccer so much. I mean, if you don't exercise, it doesn't mean the president should exercise. Soccer is a form of exercise. As Deputy Information Minister Boa Karfufana speaking about some progress made just one on one year on the CDC led government as a result, among other things, of the cordial uh, and smooth working relationship between and amongst members of the three branches of government. If you just join us, you're watching the weekend edition of News Live on LNTV as well. We bring you all of the latest development in Liberia and other parts of our warm world. And stay ahead of us in this weekend edition of the program. Thousands of people in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum, have turned out for a funeral of a man shot dead on Thursday during clashes with security forces. We'll bring you that story plus much more right after this break. So please be there. <laughs> And they control 40% of the global oil supply. 14 nations have firm control of 40% of the oil that is supplied for consumption globally. Mm. Now, OPEC as a consortium sometimes allocates their production output. They assign quota to the nations, to the member states. They determine how much you can put, you can produce. Is the assigned quota, is the production quota. And they use the elementary tier of supply and demand in assigning quota. The leader of OPEC is Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay. 
So Saudi Arabia alone by herself triggers production of port. She, or Saudi Arabia is like the the central bank of the oil market. Okay. So when OPEC decides to increase production or port beyond global demand, meaning that supply goes greater than demand, obviously price of oil appreciates. It goes up. Yeah. And when the price of the crude, we speak in terms of the crude now, when the price of the crude goes up, every other offshoot from the crude price obviously goes up, like what we use on our local market, the gasoline, the diesel, the jet fuel, and the other fuel. Yeah. It comes from the crude. Well, at the same time, Mr. Brown has been providing later statistics about petroleum prices on the continent of Africa with Liberia at an appreciable level. Today, Liberia diesel pump price is $3.70, translating to an equivalent of uh, 98 cents, less than $1 for a liter of diesel. If you compare that with Guinea, Guinea is $1.04 per liter. You compare that with Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone is 96 cents. Sierra Leone is lower than Liberia in diesel. Liberia is 98, Sierra Leone is 96. Aricos is $1.04. Ghana is $1.02. Burkina Faso is 97 cents. And Togo is 94 cents. On the diesel side, Sierra Leone and Togo are lower than Liberia by a margin of 4 cents and 2 cents respectively. The rest of the countries are far above except Nigeria. The product in Liberia is not subsidized. Hmm. Neither has the government of Liberia reduced her taxes. Hmm. The taxes on the product, both uh, sales tax, uh, all government revenue, remains the same. Yeah, the uh, director of operations of the LPRC speaking to the station. As a result of the constraints associated with uh, cocoa products on the Liberian market, Grand Cayman County Representative Osheri is said to be utilizing a 250 acre of land to plant cocoa in his district. According to him, the planting of the cocoa would upon subsequently that is empower several young people in his district. And so that's another way of empowering the youth and elders in this district. Right, that's what I, I intend to do. So tell us, what do we have in time come for probably the next three years, long term? Yeah, this cocoa bears uh, from five to three years, the first 36 months it will begin to bear. So by 2021, we expect to be harvesting. We, we learned that uh, from time immemorial that Liberia has been one of the second largest uh, country in the world in terms of producing rubber and now at a point in time it dropped on the market and then cocoa from other countries have been produced. So why did you uh, decide planting cocoa instead of rubber that is fast grown in your country? First of all, cocoa is the most crops that we buying crops on the world market right now than rubber. Because the rubber, the price of rubber by ton is somewhere around five hundred and twenty-five dollars per ton. Just imagine, Firestone is the only company that buying rubber in Liberia. So even if you have your rubber anywhere outside Morovia or Firestone, you're going to transport your rubber from where you are to Abe Firestone. That's going to be costing you a lot of money. A lot of people here get uh, rubber farms that they're not even able to sell their rubber because the transportation alone. If we carry two tons, you know, you're going to be spending roughly almost the exact money that you will be selling for. Police Inspector or General Patrick Sulu says we are committed to ensuring the lives and properties of this country are safe and up to standard. As a result of that, police presence is said to be increased in the coming days. Let's now bring you Police Inspector General Patrick Sulu speaking to Musu Salif of our staff. Oh want to ensure that the LMP provide security for its citizens. We will increase our visibility, officer visibility along the streets of Moravia 
will do vehicle patrol and we will ensure that there is law and order. Uh, for those who wish to demonstrate, the best bet is to come at the NMP say to us for us to plan the demonstration. Because we're going to show you no matter what, anybody go on the street to demonstrate will ensure that the demonstration will go on peacefully. We will also acquaint you with the rights because of where your right ends and where another man's right begins. And in demonstrating, it will not be too healthy to block all of the rules because we have all of users who are taxpayers who be able to use the rule. So this is the reason why we will always ask will be demonstrators to come at the LMP office. Do not be afraid. Nobody going to do anything to you. Come over and we'll say they're playing a demonstration and it will go peacefully. Well, at the same time, Colonel Sulu said, best part challenges facing the police in force, decentralization is said to be one of the primary goals of the LMP. Decentralization of the Labrador National Police is one of our primary objectives. But we have faced with a lot of impediment because we have a young government, the government has some financial constraints, and decentralization will come with a cost. It's not just easy because if I would take you from your family in Moravia to take you to the interior, and you have to buy, you have to pay your own transportation, you have to provide your own food, provide your own accommodation, look at the salary we are making. It, it makes it almost impossible. So but however, we're working alongside with the requisite government entity, working with Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Justice is adding its voice, and we are doing everything humanly possible to ensure that we decentralize the Labor National Police. This is the reason why uh, I, have a I have a strategy in place that when, when there's an opportunity for us to have our mentoring, for, uh, to have new recruits, to enter the Labrador National for the wish to do the recruitment from in the various counties. Because if we recruit from the various counties, we can train right in the county and ensure that those officers remain in the county to serve. Because if we do the recruitment from Moravia to transfer the people to the county, it's cost intensive. So Liberia's peace process, the Liberia Peace Building officers they back upon a campaign to engage young people across various communities. According to Edward Moba, getting the full participation of young people from the grassroots levels is one of the best way in at sustaining the peace process. Yeah. The president and this government has continued to emphasize the need for reconciliation, need for peace and reconciliation. You will agree with me, uh, even when the president went to the United Nations, he challenged the government government ends the responsible that his government was taking a uh, piece of reconciliation including a special focus in the youth all right at the county district community levels and in celebration or in commemoration of our 15 years of peace when the president also went to Grand Basel County where we had this Cucatano Peace Festival he further challenged that the agency responsible for for ensuring that uh, uh, or leading the process of peace reconciliation should be, again engage the communities, engage the counties, engage the district, all right, including the youth, focusing the youth, so that we get perspectives, we get their ideas, their suggestions as to how they intend to build a peace, to sustain the peace, to ensure that there's continuous stability. So that challenge is a challenge now that we are taking to run with as an office of the government of peace. Have you begun already? Well, yes, certainly. We have started the process. And like I just mentioned to you, we now have a, a one-year work plan. And that work plan, though we have a number of things in that work plan, but one key strategic activity to be delivered in the next few months from now is exactly to do that particular uh, activities that the, the president has challenged us to do. In Bansar and Bapulu, among other counties, are said to be the areas where the office will begin its decentralization process in spreading the messages of peace to rural Liberia. 
We have very Which counties? Well, we're going to have seven counties, including Bakulu, uh, Sino, Grand Cru, Maryland, Grand, no, we got no Grand Gita, Riverside, uh, Grand Bassa, uh, Bomi. So we, those are counties that we're going to. What's the message you're taking to those counties? Well, the message is one central message, all right, that we need to ensure that our peace is consolidated. And to consolidate the peace continuously in this country will require the impulse, the participation, the perspectives of all the people. All the people by, by, by representation, all the people by the actual participation, and so forth. So we're taking the message of the president to, 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 to these counties, to these different villages and towns and communities, all right? And so that we can promote by that, they will even be able to define what intergroup our relations should be. How should they strengthen that intergroup relationship? How should they ensure that violent tendencies are, are decreased? All right. How should we even build civil trust and build confidence? Because if people are not trusted or have perception that certain structures of government uh, gov gov government is not trusted, all right, it tends to set in the certain fashion and so forth. Now, that's Edward Moba, he's the executive director of the Liberia Peace Building Office, talking about some plans they've had in place to help spread uh, the messages of peace into other parts of the country. And off the home front now, thousands of people in the Sudanese capital Khartoum have turned out for a funeral of a man shot late Thursday during clashes with security forces. One witness said police opened fire as the mourners on two racks and calling for President Omar al-Bashir to step down. A constant chant con at countrywide demonstrations now in his fair week. A doctor and a boy were also shot dead on Thursday and a group of anti-government doctors called the killings cold-blooded and announced a strike at a large private hospital. Amnesty International has urged Sudan to end what it called a continued onslaught against medical facilities and injured protesters. With that development, we come to the end of the weekend edition of News Life on LNTV. But we are going a reminder of a few of our top stories. The Chinese government to assist Liberia built a modern diagnostic center at the floating military hospital in the country soon. One county lawmaker stresses the need for the passage of the traditional midwife bill into law. According to Moeman Briggs Menza, the bill upon passage will protect and recognize the services of midwives in the healthcare delivery system of Liberia. Government says it has not received any report from investigators on the $16 billion investigation saga contrary to rumors across this republic. And of the home front, thousands of people turn out in Khartoum, Sudan for funeral of a man shot dead Thursday during clashes with security forces. Many thanks for watching and to the entire news crew of LNTV. Many thanks to all of you who helped in making this entire week edition a success. Until Monday, I'm Julius Conton. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.